Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about this International TD6. Now, this is one that starts on gas, which is the diesel, and I want to try and explain how this system works the best of my ability to walk you through this thing, show you step by step all the parts involved. It's got a diesel injection pump on one side of the engine. The other side of the engine's got a magneto, carburetor, spark plugs. We're going to start at the beginning and break this down, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, this is a 1942 International TD6 crawler, and this is a diesel engine that starts on gasoline. What International did, they incorporated a gasoline engine into this diesel engine just to start it up. And I think this design of engine started in the 30s, and I believe that continued into the 50s. And the problem they had with diesels in the early days, they didn't have a starter motor that would crank these over with the high compression. So where Caterpillar used a separate little gasoline engine called a pony engine to spin the engine over. International built the gas motor into the diesel engine just for starting purposes. So if we start at the back, this is the fuel tank for the diesel. And we come up here, and this is the fuel tank to start it on gasoline. Only meant to start the engine. I've had people ask me over the years if you could run this machine on gas and actually use it. Answer is no. But it has very low power. You can get the machine to move a little bit, and that's about it. And on this side of the engine, you can see here's the injector pump. Here's the four injectors, this inline four cylinder. Let's take a quick look at the opposite side. And this is the gasoline side. We have a magneto down here, that's our ignition system. We've got a carburetor, which is an updraft carburetor. There's four spark plugs in here, two underneath this manifold, one on each end. So all this here is the gasoline part of the engine. Okay, here's something interesting. When this machine was built, it come with a hand crank on it, even though it had the electric starter. Once it had a blade assembly put on it, which was the hydraulic tank, the hydraulic pump, the pump drives off the front of the crankshaft on the engine where the hand crank would go. So you wouldn't be able to use that crank. It fit right through the bottom of the grill here and engage into the crankshaft. All right, now when you're in the operator's seat, you got your standard levers for your steering clutches, your drive clutch. This is the throttle lever for the injector pump. Right now it is off, but pushing this lever forward, gonna increase your pressure, increase your RPM. Here's the lever that does everything that switches from gas to diesel. Right now, in up position, that's in diesel mode. Pull this down, it's in gas mode, and that's how we'll start it. Okay, I'm gonna throw this lever. This lever hooks to a cross shaft. It goes all the way through the engine, out the other side. That activates the gasoline side. With this lever in the up position, we're in diesel. Pull it back, we're in gas mode. This side all works like a regular diesel engine. So let's talk about the other side and I'll break everything down and show you what happens. Okay, first off, for this to run on gasoline, in the head for each cylinder, there are actually three valves. You got your intake and exhaust like normal. You have an extra valve in each cylinder and that's the starting valve. The starting valves all open at the same time by means of a shaft. It's like a camshaft, it pivots, it's hooked to the linkage rod and the cam will push those valves down down, so all of them stay open. The spark plug is back behind there, so that'll expose the spark plug to the combustion chamber. It increases the combustion chamber, it lowers the compression ratio to run on gasoline. So the first thing we have here is our magneto, and it's got the coil underneath the cap here, there's condenser points, the cap, all the wires go to the spark plugs. Here we have our updraft carburetor. This carburetor only runs one speed. It's got a choke lever on it to get it started, but there is no throttle for it. It's set for one speed. And the intake manifold, it's got a small port down here that's the air intake for the gas side. The upper port is for the diesel side. And there's butterfly valves in this big ported side that'll be shut off when it's in the gas mode. Now on this magneto, there's a grounding wire here. Hooks right to the end of the condenser coming out runs up inside the intake manifold, and there's an insulated plate up here. It runs off that same rod those butterfly valves are hooked to, and what that does, when you put it in a diesel mode, it contacts and it grounds out. So it actually just grounds out the magneto so there's no spark going to the plugs anymore. So let's take a look at this intake manifold. Now you can see the butterfly valve in this big opening. 
That'll open up when it's in diesel mode. When it's in gas mode, it draws air through these smaller holes right here. And when you put it in diesel mode, these open up, but that way it allows more air into the intake. That cross shaft that goes to the engine hooks to this mechanism here, and this engages the carburetor, the intake manifold, and the starting valves. This lever hooks to the carburetor, so when it's in diesel mode, it raises the float up to seal off the needle and seat to shut fuel off. This rod here opens up the starting valves in each cylinder. This tang right here on the rod, that engages with that V-block on the intake manifold to move the butterfly valves. Everything is under tension here. It's spring-loaded, and it's not just this spring here. I think there's an internal spring maybe on the other side of the block in that assembly. But I'm going to move that lever into the diesel mode. It doesn't just pivot. Everything snaps shut into place. So I'm going to start moving this lever. Okay, there it's in diesel mode. So it snaps like a mouse trap. I'm going to put it back in the gas. So there's a lot going on there, and it's a whole lot easier to explain it with the intake manifold out of the way. This V-block engages on that tang on that upper rod. That way the butterfly valves open up to the bigger chamber in the intake manifold to get more airflow into the combustion chambers. All right, all that's left to do is start this thing up. Open the valve up on the fuel tank. Open the valve up on the gas tank. And I'll put it in gas mode. That'll let the carburetor fill up with gas. I'll wait about 30 seconds. It can start it up. for a couple of minutes, get some heat in the engine, and then switch it over to diesel. So it does switch over pretty seamless. It's actually a good system. To shut this machine down, you shut the petcock off on a gas side, let it run the carburetor out of gas. We're going to switch it back to gasoline. important when you shut these machines down, let the carburetor run out of gas. When the engine dies, you kick it into the diesel position right here. That way those starting valves are closed and seated when they cool. If you leave it down in the gas mode and it runs out of gas and you just leave it like that, those valves can have a tendency to warp and they won't seat on you. So make sure you just kick it back into diesel mode once it shuts off. Well, I hope I did an okay job explaining how this works. And I'm surprised how many of these machines are still out there. I've got a lot of comments from guys that have these or used to have them, used to run them. And there's quite a few videos on YouTube featuring these same machines. They're not all that uncommon. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought. Let me know if you have one of these machines. Hit that like and subscribe button if you already haven't. Thanks for watching.